in this Remarkable Mark live stream, I will be learning and kind of playing around with the HTML5 draggable attribute. I found that the HTML5 draggable attribute is the native web attribute that can be used for dragging and dropping things on web pages or websites. So I want to take the time instead of, you know, using libraries like I've done in the past to learn more about this native attribute and see how to use it. Cool, so I have this replit and let me just Google or search for the HTML5 draggable attribute and let's read up some docs about it. Cool, I've seen that there is double three docs and the developer Mozilla one. I do like the Mozilla MDN documentation. Let me just take a look at that first. Cool, so not much here. Let's see if there's the comprehensive example. Cool, I guess the first thing is you want to set the attribute to make it draggable in the first place. So let me go into my REPLIT. Let me delete all this stuff, which I don't need. And for now, let me just create a simple div. I also, let me also add some styles to that div. And I will make that div since it's a box. I'll give it a width of 100 pixels, height of 100 pixels, and a background color of sky blue. Cool, and so we have our beautiful blue box. Doesn't do anything. As you can see, as I'm trying to drag over it, it is not exactly doing anything. So let's see what happens when I add the draggable equals true. Let's refresh the page. And now with the draggable true, it seems like I can use my mouse, although actually you can't see it on the stream, to kind of drag it around. Or maybe you can. So let's see. That allows it to drag and it seems like here we have a few event event attributes. So on drag start which starts the drag operation and then you provide drag data. Interesting. Set data text plane text to drag let's see if there is a simpler example I did open up this so once again it tells you syntax is it can be true false or auto and let's just verify that it's not a boolean attribute that if I simply do this does it still work it does not work so you must set it to one of those values. Cool. And then, oh, this has a better example. All right, so here we have the drop event over here, which allows for the drop. And here uh, is the draggable element. So that, let's actually copy that example. And let us do something similar to that. So let's give an ID of box. And then I will also create the draggable element or the drag background. So I'll call this rectangle. So 
So for here, this is box. And for rectangle, I'll give a larger width and height. And let's give it a background of tomato. Because, you know, it's a fruit. Not really. Or vegetable. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> let's run it. And boom, we have our blue draggable thing and our draggable drop element. And so here we have the on drag start. So let me just copy this and paste it into this div, just like that. And then for the on drop, let me just copy this and then paste it over here as well. Cool. Let me also expand this so it's a bit more readable. Cool. And then let's look at these scripts or JavaScript. Okay, so we have the allow drop, which is event.prevent default doesn't really do anything. So event.prevent default just prevents the event from actually triggering. Let me add that here right below in the script. And I'll paste it right over here and then we can look at it. Cool. So, technically, by pasting the script, this should work by default without anything. So, let me run it, and let's see what happens if I... Oh, wow, look at that. It just merged, or it didn't really merge. What actually happened was, I believe that it created... Oh, I see. It must have deleted the previous element, and then appended it down there. Yes, that is correct. The box is now inside of the container, the red container. The blue is inside of the red. Gotcha. So then let me simply refactor the event attributes to actual event listeners since I think that is generally better practice regarding adding event listeners. And so we have the first one which is allow drop. And so allow drop as the function we can keep as is. And if we create the event listener, so we have document dot query selector. And the allow drop is done on the red rectangle. So we want to query select or get the element by ID of rectangle and then add event listener and this event is the drop I believe or no it's a drag over drag over allow drop and let me just make sure I close it so this should actually allow me to remove this event attribute and it should still work as expected assuming I did it right. So let's see and there we go. So we have that and then we also have now this is for the tomato container and then we have the blue box, which is the draggable element itself. So here we can create, call it box, document.query selector, box, and then box will have two event listeners. Actually, no, that is incorrect. It has one. 
one event listener and that would be the drag start so drag start is simply the drag function like that and so if I remove this this should still continue to work as expected and it does great and no console errors and then finally this is the one I want to create or cache the element rect add event listeners drag over and the rectangle I want to add one more event listener and this is for the drop the on drop event and this should be drop like that awesome so let me kind of move this or co-locate the function so it's a little more readable the allow drop and the drop we have the rectangle element these two event listeners added and then we have the box with this this allows me to finally remove the final event attribute on the element itself since we have it now refactored to the event listeners JavaScript ones and boom works and so let's look at what it's doing for the box the sky blue block box we have the drag start event listener and what it's doing is calling this function drag in which it passes the event in the event there's a transfer data and set data so it sets a data we call it text you could probably name it whatever you want and then event.target.id. I wonder if you could name it whatever you want. So if I call this, if I rename this to ID and then change the other text to ID as well, should this still work? There's only one way to find out. And yes, so this is pretty much some key value that can be named whatever. And so here the event.target.id is simply the element event target is the element and the element ID which is the ID we put over here and then so then once we get to the rectangle the tomato art rectangle we have two event listeners drag over and drop and so in the drag over what's happening is we are calling the callback event dot prevent default so we're preventing the default event but what is the default event I'm actually curious what if I comment this out and see what happens running it now and then gotcha so the event dot prevent default is necessary or else the drop action does not occur and if I run this again continues to work okay so we do need this and then here now in the drop event it hits the callback for here it has in the first argument the event which is passed in so here what we're doing is now we're doing the event data transfer and getting the data and this was the ID we set which is ID ID of the element we named that ourselves and then event target append child so event.target is once again the element and then element.appendchild document.getElement by ID data or the ID. Let's just rename it to make it more consistent and then event.prevent default again. Gotcha. So I think that is actually pretty simple in terms of API wise and I saw in the MDN documentation that there are a few other things you can do like you can use the canvas you could probably even use this to drop or move images as well which is pretty interesting and of course you know this is the native API I know that for those before who have used drag and drop you probably used a third-party library you know in the old times that would be jQuery 
and then you know recent times there are probably some libraries as well if you're using react there's probably the react dnd package as well but this is pretty cool so i think i think this is the gist of it and i was able to you know follow the example and build this awesome take care everyone i'm ending the stream